But folks, back to business. You know, we talked about a very serious topic on about January 6th and, and what I truly believe is a threat to our country's uh, sovereignty and our democracy, for real. But I, I thought this story was pretty hilarious because, you know, Hunter Biden just can't get right, folks. This man cannot get right. And it, it sort of goes, it, it, it goes to show you that whatever you put out there in life, you reap it in the flesh. Because Joe Biden is one of the biggest drug warriors this country's ever had. Maybe the biggest drug warrior this country's ever had. Other than Richard Nixon, who started the war on drugs specifically so that he could disrupt hippie and black communities. He specifically said it. You don't believe me. His own aide, John Ehrlichman, said this. Nixon hated blacks. Nixon hated hippies. He started the war on drugs so he could harass and disrupt their communities. I'm not saying that, not Scott Cannon. John Ehrlichman, Richard Nixon's aide, said that, who was there with him while he, while he was doing it, said that. Uh, so Joe Biden's one of the biggest drug warriors we've ever had in this country. And because of that, his son is one of the biggest drug addicts we have in this country. Uh, normally, look, I, I'm not one to want to uh, to dismiss and sort of disrespect people's addictions, but it's it's only newsworthy because of who his father is. His father is the president of the United States. His father is somebody who is the, the probably the living individual most responsible for African American men being the most incarcerated people on planet Earth. And we talked about this earlier. Black men out of a population of 20 million or so, 20, 25 million, are the most incarcerated people on planet Earth. There are 4 billion women on the planet. And yet, there are more of us incarcerated than there are women. All of the 4 billion women on the planet incarcerated, just us here in this country. So it is, it is important to talk about this because... In the new scandal that the mainstream media is mostly ignoring because they are in the tank for the corporate sellout liberal Democratic Party, Hunter Biden is casually waving around a handgun and even points it at a camera while cavorting with a nude hooker in a swank hotel room, according to the video provided by the Post by the nonprofit Marco Polo Research Group. Now, Hunter recorded this video October 17, 2018, which first revealed its existence. The outlet and a poor source described his companion in the video as a prostitute. Five days earlier, he bought a 38 caliber handgun in Delaware. In order to, the, to make the purchase, Hunter Biden answered no to a question that asked, are you an unlawful user or addicted to marijuana or any depressant stimulus, stimulant or narcotic drug or any other controlled substance. So in order to get this gun, he lied about being a drug addict. Now at a time while his father is grandstanding around the country talking about he wants to ban this type of gun, that type of gun, restrict gun ownership, his son is lying on applications to get guns okay hunter has acknowledged his repeated struggles with drug addiction and alcoholism including a photo of what appeared to be crack cocaine and drug paraphernalia including a spoon and a pair of plates my god hunter has been discharged from the u.s navy reserve three years earlier after testing positive for cocaine just weeks after hunter bought this weapon the 38 caliber his his lover who was his late brother's wife hallie she tossed the gun into a supermarket garbage can setting off a secret service and fbi probe no charges were ever filed now again 
Joe Biden, who has a approval rating lower than chlamydia at this point, is telling all, uh, is lecturing us about guns. He's been lecturing us for 30, 40 years about drugs. Even saying that drug users were just as bad as drug dealers because without drug users, there'd be no drug dealers. This is the logic that he's used to justify mass incarcerating millions of black people. Of course, we still vote for him because, you know, it is what it is. Um, but now you see his son is out there with the guns, with the drugs, making a damn fool out of himself. And of course, where is Joe to make an example? Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And this is how you know they knew that mass incarceration was not the answer to our problems in this country, especially in the black community. If putting people in prison forever was the answer to dealing with drug and behavioral problems, why ain't Joe Biden put his son in, in prison? His son is the epitome of a repeat user, abuser of drugs. He, he is a, a, a repeat abuser, a user of prostitutes, illegally buying guns. And again, where is he at to set an example by saying, yes, my son did this. And so I'm going to treat him the same way that I demanded black people in the city of Gary or East Chicago, or in Hammond, get treated by the legal system. This is why I don't vote for these people. Now, I ain't going to vote for no Republicans either, God. No, but this is why I voted third party. I saw Trump and his retarded kids, and I see Biden and his, uh, his disgusting children, and I am not, I'm not, I don't want nothing to do with either one of them. I voted third party. Don't blame me for any of this. Now, even if your thing isn't caring about Hunter's drug or, or gun problems, there's still the matter of his hard drive from his laptop that showed that his firm took about $11 million in five years. Just in five years, he made about $11 million between 2013 and 2018 starting while his father at that point was the vice president of these United States of America. From 2013 to 2018, him and his company bought in, brought in about $11 million via his role as an attorney. Now this is a guy, a crackhead with prostitutes and guns working as an attorney and a board member with a Ukrainian. What's going on in Ukraine right now? Isn't there something going on in Ukraine right now? Anybody, anybody want to call in and tell me what's going on in Ukraine right now? As an attorney and a board member with a Ukrainian firm accused of bribery and his work with a Chinese businessman now accused of fraud. According to NBC News. So I didn't make this up. You can look it up. Now, the documents don't show what he did to earn millions from his Chinese partners. It does raise questions ab about national security, business ethics, and potential legal exposure. Now, he was even warned by his ex-business partner that he should amend his tax returns to disclose $400,000 in income from the Ukrainian firm Burisma. And we, we should know that when the GOP takes back the House and the Senate from the Democrats in November, you better believe they're actually going to flesh this stuff out. They will flesh this out. They are not going to let this go under the radar. 
And all you liberals out there know that if this was Don Jr. or Ivanka or Eric Trump who was doing this, that y'all wouldn't want to flesh this out. Y'all wouldn't couldn't wait to flesh this out. You know, also Russian oligarchs with close ties to Putin met with Hunter Biden while he was in Moscow. This is from the Daily Mail, the UK Daily Mail. I find they have a lot more of these type of stories because the US media won't actually cover anything. Um, but yeah, Hunter Biden courted Vladimir Yevtushkinov, Yevtushinov, Yevtushinkov. I'm not good with the Russian names, folks. A, Rus a Russian oligarch with close ties to Putin. The billionaire, who was 73 years old, owned a company which reportedly supplied Putin's forces with drones used for deadly bombings in Ukraine. He was sanctioned by the UK and Australia this month, but remains unsanctioned by the Biden administration. I wonder why. The president's son and his now jailed business partner, Devin Archer, sought an investment from the billionaire in Rosemont Realty in 2012 and 2013. This is while Joe Biden was the vice president of the United States. Now, all you he you've heard for the last five or six years is that if you have any ties to Russian oligarchs or Russian business people, that it has to be exposed and you have to be you know, run out of town on the rail. But here we are right now, the president's son, while his father was the vice president, was in Russia doing all kinds of deals with Russian oligarchs. The emails from his abandoned laptop show that he booked a trip to Moscow for dinner with the oligarch at his company Systema's headquarters in February of 2012. A, a system of itinerary translated from Russian also showed a March 14th, 2012 breakfast with Hunter Biden at the Ritz Carlton in New York. The following day, the oligarch Yatushkinov, Yatushinov, Yatushinkov, I don't know, had another breakfast with Rosemont Realty at the city's Ritz Carlton on March 15th. Wow. You know, this is who runs our country. These are the people and their children who run our country. Now, financial records have also revealed that Joe Biden agreed to pay his son's legal fees for his deal with the Chinese government controlled company. So that's who the big guy was, you know. He had $5.2 million in unexplained income. And when the heat came, his father, Joe, was able to pay the bills after earning millions of dollars through his and his wife's company after he left office as vice president. Now, this analysis came from, again, the Daily Mail in the UK. They showed that the president's financial records show $5.2 million in unexplained income. The missing millions and the emails on Hunter's abandoned laptop suggest Joe would have 10% share in Hunter's blockbuster deal with the Chinese. The revelation ties the president even closer to Hunter's overseas business dealings despite white, the White House denying everything. So this is what I'm talking about, folks. These are the people that you vote for. These are the people who run our country. These are, these are their children and what they do. Things that you or I, nobody else could get away with. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about Jared Kushner <laughs> and his admit his misadventures with the Saudis and what he's been able to get away with.
because that's what I do here on WLTH 1370 AM. Please give me a call, 219-85-1371. Tell me what you're doing for Juneteenth. Or you can just rap with me about the corruption in our government or what you saw in the January 6th hearings. I'll be right back after this.